people are interested in um, changing their lifestyle to become more sustainable. That they maybe don't know how, or they maybe think it's too expensive and I can't afford it, and, and this kind of thing. And so part of what we what, what what we can do there is also then, you know, if, if people want to buy organic food, but they, you know, if times are tight, they haven't got much money, uh, they don't know, they can't do it. We can then give them advice on yeah, but if you change your diet, if you change the way you 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 you, you put your meal together, you know, if you actually cook from raw basic ingredients, maybe you buy a little bit less meat. Uh, eat more vegetarian stuff. You can you can actually buy higher quality produce to the same price, or maybe even cheaper than what you're spending today on sort of conventional, more fast food, and all that kind of thing. So, look, we're we're starting to look at how can we support that kind of process. Uh, not going out there and stick, stuffing it down people's throats, but just being able to be to to respond to the interest that's out there and to help people adapt both both from a uh, an environmental perspective but there's health issues in there and there's, there's economic issues in there um, and I think it's going to be interesting it's an interesting experiment that we're just going to pilot this now see how it works and then maybe that will become a sort of a more permanent part of our work for the future and I looking ahead I can see a, a time where maybe we don't need to work so much more with transport and buildings and that kind of stuff because we're getting to a stage where the, the market is starting to work and that's going to start kicking in. And then if we start dramatically decreasing our environmental impact from transport and dramatically decreasing our environmental impact from the built environment, then we'll have a massive increase in the percentage of the, of the environmental impact of our lifestyle. So that's where we need to be starting to, to focus on helping, helping people change their lifestyles. Uh, not necessarily sacrificing lots of things, uh, but actually finding new qualities, an, in, an improved quality of life in many respects by changing behaviour, doing the right thing. One of the problems is that people, we have a built up organisations like uh, the public sector is very good at planning. We like to plan. We like to know exactly this is our plan and this is the effect it's going to give, um, and we're great at doing that. Um, but you, you need to go from the plans to action, and sometimes I think you also have to realise that we don't actually know. We don't actually. It's it's maybe better to act now, and maybe make a few mistakes, but we can learn from those mistakes and we act again, and we make a few more mistakes and we keep learning and do that learning process, rather than spending the next 20 years planning how to create a sustainable city, because then we've, we've had it, basically. We don't have that time. We've got to do it. We've got to do it. Uh, and I think, it's a matter, I think that's one of the, the key issues, and it's one of the key things that's happening in Malmo, is like learning by doing, not loads of theory. We just get out there. We do it. We make our mistakes. We publish our mistakes. Uh, we make sure that everybody knows what mistakes we've made so that they don't make the same mistakes again and that we don't make the same mistakes again. So I think, you know, the, the time for, for, for ideas and, 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 and dreams are, are over. It's now we're into action. Um, and also, you know, the technology's there. People talk about, oh, you know, when the next wave of technology. The technology's here now. Um, you know, we can we can probably. I, I think the the, the uh, we're working quite a bit with the with WWF, and they 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 have this uh, theory that eighty percent of the technology is already there to meet the ch the climate challenge. Um, so we use it. Just get out there, use it, put it into place. The other twenty percent will come on board. Big question. Really big question. I think I think a lot of it is about. I mean, from a, from the city's perspective, I think we have to, we have to realise two things really. One is that we've got a really important role to play, and the other is that we can't do anything. <laughs> Basically, uh, we we need to make sure that we're working with other people who can actually do things. Um, but what our, the importance of our role? Is, is to, to listen and to be able to respond to interesting ideas 
and to be able to think in new ways. And I think this is one of the things that Malmö has been quite good at, is, is a kind of um, the ability to, to, uh, to, to take some kind of off-the-wall decisions, to, to, to take risks, uh, and also to build new partnerships with other, other people. It may be local people, it may be businesses, it may be any. Um, so I think, I, I think a lot of it is going to be around these kind of like small initiatives which grow. Um, which create positive effects and positive images. Part of it is around, um, you know, the, the, the kind of stuff like this, this the, the community garden out in, out in this neighbourhood, you know, that will have an effect on the way local people think about the, the, the spaces around them, uh, about where the food comes from and things like that, and we'll probably see more of that kind of thing happening. Uh, the, another thing is around, you know, business development. We have uh, loads of really exciting small businesses with a completely different approach, often run by young people, young entrepreneurs, um, who maybe, when I was their age, I, I, I would have been working in an NGO or something like that. They start in their own business and they're, you know, working with organic food or, or with fair trade clothing or whatever, that kind of thing. The, those kind of initiatives are taking off as well on a big scale. Uh, and that's having a, a massive impact, I think, on, on just... Um, the, there's a lot of people who would like to do things differently, but they don't know where to find the thing. They don't know what to do. They, but the more you see that, the more that's visualized, and that a sustainable lifestyle isn't just something that you dream about or something you read about, but it's something you see on the street corner. Your kids tell you about what they've had at school, and and you know you see it at work, and you, it, it becomes part of daily life. And then you get this snowball effect. Uh, and I think that is, it feels like we're on the verge of that snowballing now, starting to roll. And that's going to be really, really exciting. <laughs>